audiences can expect just a great film. We're retelling a fantastic tale with wonderful music and adding to a technology that no one has ever seen before, no one has ever used before, and it's just exquisite. Well, when you think about telling a story with animals in Africa, that can be very complicated if you're going to try anything in what we would call live action or something that looks like live action. This technology gave us the ability to retell this story in a way that made sense in a number of directions. We wouldn't have been able to do it without that technology. In this particular case, because of the success of the first film and the fact that it's so beloved, it was very, very important to respect the story that was originally told. By the way, it was a fantastic story, so I don't know why we wouldn't do that. And to update it to some extent, because the times have changed over 25 years. Well, in each case, they brought some of their own personality, directed, of course, by John Favreau, different from some of the voices in the first film. So I think they each bring to this who they are. You know, whether you know it's Donald Glover or you know Beyonce, to, just to name two, uh, that is uh, the same characters but with a slightly different take. And I like that. Well, we had a long discussion at the beginning about you know what songs should be in, what songs had to be in, and we all were aligned on that, John Favreau in the studio. You have to have the, the most classic songs, obviously. Um, and, and so I think we ended up with just a great blend, also bringing Hans Zimmer back, having Elton John's and Tim Rice's cooperation, and Lebo, who brought us the real African music to the original film and to the stage, to the stage show. Yes, Beyonce uh, wrote a song that she thought was incredibly appropriate, not only for the film, but for a very, very specific uh, part of the story, and uh, surprised us with what is just a tremendous, tremendous effort, both in terms of her performance, but also the writing of the song. It's just a great song. And it freshens the whole, it freshens the whole piece, too. Not that the technology and the new voices don't, because they certainly do, but this adds yet another touch of freshness and, and relevance to this. Well, I think if you break down the story, first of all, I think there's a little bit of everything for everyone in it. But it's just such a classic tale about love and hate and, and heroism and uh, the, the power that good ultimately triumphs over evil. A uh, love of family, you know, respect for your elders, respect for your country. I mean, I could go on and on. Friendship. I just think there's a universal appeal to this and this story in particular. It's why The Lion King was so popular in 1994 why it's remained popular for 25 years and why we're, we're retelling it. Well, so many people around the world have seen The Lion King. Of course, many haven't. I'd like everybody who sees it to just fall in love with the characters, the story, whether they saw it or not before, to understand that what we've done here is to pay incredible respect to the filmmakers and the artists that created the first story, but make it so relevant with the technology and, and, and the new performances. I just think it's a, a fantastic film. Uh, a little bit, uh, I could say excited, but a lot more still calm and relaxed and trying to avoid being stressed. Well, fortunately for me, I, I don't think I've left uh, or I've had to, I'm coming back to the Lion King. I've been working a Broadway show from day one around the world. So for me, this is an exciting next level adventure, but I have to confess uh, my expectations were, oh, okay, another one, but the, the exciting uh, challenge became even bigger. The work was amazing. It, it still feels new because the approach was different. Fortunately, like I said earlier, the approach, we're going from the first movie, 20-something years on a Broadway show, to a live action movie, which means it's a continuation for me. We approached the live soundtrack from a live approach, which is really exciting and different even the way I recorded the choirs in South Africa and America. So it's just an adventure that never ends. And excitement, is still, it feels like a new project. It doesn't feel like I've been doing the same show, same story for 25 years now. Huh? Yes. It is not set up like this. It's the one playing right now. <laughs> he Lives in You, which is a song that I originally wrote with Mark for the movie. It didn't make, up, it, didn't, it, didn't make it in the movie. Found his home. And the Broadway show is performed by Simba. Uh, by Mufasa and Rafiq in Broadway, and now we redid the same song in Khosa, which is quite amazing for me. It's still 
a big, big surprise for me. I'm still, can I still see real? I started feeling the impact of it globally when I started going on tour with Hans. Uh, it makes me feel great. Seth Rogen and I had our work cut out for us, stepping in the footsteps of uh, Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella, who did it originally, and uh, we were a little nervous about that, but so far the reaction is really, really great. Yeah, well, I grew up worshiping Nathan Lane, who did it originally, uh, so I was nervous, very excited, and, you know, I played Timon, who's like the funny, wisecracking meerkat, and uh, he has a really big personality and a small body, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> John Favreau, our director, encouraged us to improvise a lot, and a shocking amount of that improv ended up in the movie, which is really fun and different for a movie like this. I think you can feel that when you watch it. Uh, well, it was relevant then, and I think it's relevant now. It's a classic, you know, and I think classics are always going to get updated. And in the theater world, you revive classic plays and musicals every couple of years. You know, someone does a new take on it with new actors, and I think the themes of the movie are very relevant to today, and especially, you know, how Every action has a reaction. Everything we do as people affects someone else, another animal, another creature on the planet, and we're all sharing the planet together, and that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, it was a little nerve-wracking, Hakuna Matata. It's an iconic song, but luckily, Seth and Donald Glover and I all got to record together, which is very rare for one of these movies. Sometimes the actors record separately, so that was very helpful. We just leaned on each other. I think the story is timeless. It's about growing up, it's about going, finding your right path, it's about trusting people, it's about love, it's about hate, it's about becoming an adult and in our story, taking what is yours, you know? And then having people that advise you, people who might want to put you down. It's a timeless story. Well, Shinzi is one of the hyenas and she is responsible for her pack, so therefore she wants to make sure that everybody's fine. Um, she doesn't always have the best intentions, like she's somebody I wouldn't trust. She's a very strong person, but she gets together with Scar in order to make sure that maybe somebody else is able to be the ruler. Best case her, but Scar works too. You know what, I saw the movie and I've never seen something like this. This is a movie which will entertain you, but the technique that has been used in order to produce this movie, it feels very real and I think that's the reason why it touches me even more than the old version. I was happy with the old version, but this is special. I'm really honestly relieved, but, but I still have a huge hurdle to pass. This is my daughter Zoe Zimmer, who I did the original movie for, and she hasn't seen it yet. Seen so, it. if she, you know, I have to figure out if she likes it or not, because you know, I could be in big trouble. <laughs> um, it was really all about John. Um, with very, you know, very few words, he just he just invited me over and said, "Yeah, I want to show you something." He showed me the the opening, and I was as as anybody would be, somewhat, you know. Sort of, you know, well, I'm not sure if you can beat the original. And it just drew me in, it just blew me away. And, and okay, I'm going to admit it, I actually cried at the end. So he got me. And I thought, I thought he's directing this, you know, the technology is fabulous, but the thing that really is directing this is John's huge heart. You know, and the actors are truly astonishing. And, and, and just being able to work with some of my favorite people in the world as well again. Well, very little collaboration, very much her really, really studying the film and really, really sort of at the last moment going, um, I have a little something I want to play you. And of course us going, it's a diamond. All right, let's make room for this. Thank you so much. And, and, and it's, it's, just, it's, it's just great to be given such a treasure. I love doing something, you know, although people are familiar with the story, they've never seen anything like this before. We've, we're using a lot of new visual effects, we have a great cast, new music, and, and that's, that's what you want to do. You want to surprise people, you want to show them something that they're not quite sure what they're looking at. And, and I have to say that the visual effects that came together for this are, uh, are going to be it's going to be wonderful to see how people react to it and, and uh, like seeing a story they love in a whole different way. 
Yeah, I took everything that I learned on on, on Jungle Book and, and we uh, removed the one human character and saw if we could tell a story with completely uh, animated performances and an environment that's completely digitally rendered. Uh, and hopefully it will look like a live action film and like a documentary. So it's fun to watch it. You don't know till you show it to a new audience. And so, you know, these premieres are wonderful because I haven't really gotten to see it with people before. So in, in LA, I saw it for the first time and today will be the second time I'm seeing it with a crowd. My job with the music is just to encourage all these talented people to work together and collaborate. But whether it's a new song from Beyonce or a new song collaboration with Elton John, Lebo, Tim Rice, and then, of course, all the reinterpretations of the classics to Hans's score and to the songs that Elton and, and Tim wrote for the original is wonderful. And somebody like Beyonce taking Can You Feel the Love Tonight and doing a duet with Donald Glover, I mean, that's something that, that I, I, it's a real treat for people who are fans of the original to see what they did with that. I think this a story about all of us working together and a sense of uh, overcoming hardship and stepping up and taking responsibility for helping to shape the future uh, is, uh, is a wonderful lesson for all generations. There are certain things we had to change in this, uh, especially when, with regards to colloquial humor and, and some of the musical interpretations, but when it came down to the message and to James Earl Jones' uh, monologues as Mufasa, we found that it, it felt like it was just written yesterday, even though it was 25 years ago. So there's something timeless about stories about, about the human condition, about perseverance. That makes me feel wonderful. You know, you work on this project for three years and you never know how it's going to be accepted. So for people to see what you put in really makes you feel good. respect the 94 version and how you know we really feel that's a wonderful film um, not trying to change it just let people see it in a different way yes you know we as we're as John was looking through the script with the writer there's so many lines that still hold true particularly Mufasa's lines you know the circle of life and a responsibility to be part of a community um, I think that's so important Thrilling. It's thrilling. I mean, who else do you want to hear sing Can You Feel the Love other than Beyonce? And then, you know, Tim Rice and Elton John. It's mind blowing. You're, no, you're often like, I can't believe this is my job. I can't believe I get to do this. You know? I think the fact that the, 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 the film unabashedly shows its themes on its sleeves. Uh, and I think one of the most important themes is that a person coming into themselves. What happens is we get to watch with aspiration the sense of Simba saying, I'm going to, I'm going to become what I'm supposed to be. I'm going to become what I'm destined to be. And don't we all want to become what we're destined to be? Wouldn't it be great to know what we're supposed to be and become that thing? And I think that desire is what drives this tradition. Uh, my character's name is Kamari. He's one of the hyenas. And it's interesting, um, the hyenas this time around, as opposed to the original, are not anywhere near as frivolous and silly. They're a little more grave, they're a little more dangerous, um, and they still want the same thing. They just want to eat everything they see. Um, but I, I think that um, there's a really wonderful relationship between Florence Kasumba and me and Eric Andre that uh, has a little, a, a little more depth, perhaps, than the original, original um, movie. So it'll be, it'll be fascinating for you to see. I think what happens is that we, uh, we it was contrary to what I thought initially we were going to do, but what John Favreau and all of his brilliance taught me and Eric was, if you just have a relationship that's really grounded in humanity, let's not try to play animals, then other humans will be able to identify, they'll go, oh, I know somebody like that. And that familiarity, I think, d like dampens the, the, the danger just a little bit, yeah, so it's, it's more palatable in that way. You know what, because I, there's just like an overwhelming sense of pride, I was kidding about that. But in all due seriousness, it's like, man, Lion King takes place in Africa. It could have taken place anywhere else on the, on the planet or in the universe, but it took place in Africa. And to me, I, there's just like a tremendous sense of pride that like yet another amazing story comes out of there. And, um, and the story's about hope. And... Um, I don't know, I'm just very proud to be a part of it. Uh, you will forget about people. 
for a moment, which is not such a bad thing, you know? You kind of like take a break from humanity and you kind of just like, you feel, you just deal with spirits, the spirit of the, like what's inside of these uh, animals. And it's just, it's cool. Man, to have the Duke and Duchess here tonight to see a film that takes place in Africa. It's amazing. Thank you. Black, 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 black. Um, I mean, most I just hope they have like a joyous uh, experience, you know. Um, I think there is some good lessons about connectivity and being responsible for the world, but I think, you know, at worst they'll just have a very good time for two hours, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was excited, honestly. Uh, I thought, really, honestly, that me and Billy would be able to add something new and funny, and and John is someone I trust very much comedically, especially, and so uh, it was, you know, yeah, it was, uh, I wasn't, you know, I, maybe I should have had more caution. I just kind of, I said yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously the animation has evolved. I actually haven't watched the original one in a very long time. I kind of stayed away from it in preparation, just as I was making this one, because I didn't want to be too influenced by it. So I'd be curious to go back and rewatch it and see just how much has changed. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I, 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 we invited them to Super Bad. They declined. So I'm <laughs> glad that this is happening. Yeah. Sausage Party should have been a royal premiere, but maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of spooky, it's weird, it's fantastic. I mean, I never ever dreamt that The Lion King would be so successful in the first place. And then, of course, it's had a life of its own and it's been a phenomenon. And then this remake has uh, given it another boost. And it's uh, quite extraordinary how this story keeps going on and on and on. They wanted me to write a song for the end, which Tim and I did. Um, and I recorded it and um, Greg Kirsten produced it. And that's about it. And I let them go and let them, you know, for me, it's, it's another version and uh, it's someone else's turn. It's just the perfect story um, for adults and for children, of course. And every four or five years it becomes cyclical because another generation of kids can enjoy it. So it's a never ending uh, success story. And it's wonderful. It's great. It's wonderful to be a part of something that's that successful. It's given so much pleasure to so many people. Well, you may put your finger on it. It's difficult if something's already good. You know, it's, it's always difficult to um, improve it. And um, I think the original songs just stand up. You know, they've been around for a long time. So I think they'll be absolutely fine. I'm more intrigued to see how the new ones go. I, I, I don't really know how music's evolved in the 25 years. I think the songs that Elton and I wrote way back have survived, which is encouraging. And um, I haven't a clue how popular music has evolved since then. Well, I don't know. Um, I think relevance is to do with the characters that are created. If you have a good story with characters that have understandable and believable motives, then it's relevant to human nature, which never changes. I mean, human nature just doesn't change over, the, over, over 25 years and certainly doesn't even change over centuries or millennia. So if a film is relevant at one point, or if a story is relevant at one point, then I think it will always be relevant.